Do you care about breathing? Do you care about eating? Do you care about the economy? And do you care about actually living near the coast where most people live? And they said, yeah, what does that have to do with corals? Oxygen is produced by plants in the form of uh, plankton and seaweed and seagrasses and the algae that lives inside coral. Most people don't realize this, but a good 25 to 40 percent of the world's fisheries is possible because of our coral reefs. Wait a minute, what did he just say? Waves outside the reef four to six feet, waves inside the reef only one or two feet. And that's because the reef is actually blocking those big waves from coming to our shoreline. Well, most people don't realize, unless they're a scuba diver or a recent snorkeler, that we've lost 25 to 40% of the world's corals. Now that is an amazing number. And it's an amazing number because we've all grown up hearing about the decline of things such as the Arctic and Antarctic ice. But most people didn't realize that we're losing the coral reefs, mainly because they're out of mind and out of sight. Well, the Florida reef actually saw impacts starting in the 1970s and 1980s. It was a big bleaching event. They call it coral bleaching because it, temperatures get high enough that it makes the algae leave the coral and it looks or appears white. It has no color anymore. So if you think climate change is just a theory, just ask the corals. When you think about a coral reef, you can think about it in terms of an underwater rainforest. There's huge amounts of biodiversity on reefs. So there's thousands of fish species, thousands of invertebrate species, and all of these corals that call it home. It's a hugely biodiverse ecosystem. It's important for humans as well, not just biologically, um, but in terms of economy. Um, when we think about the economy of Florida and these other Caribbean nations that depend on reefs um, for their source of income, if we were to lose this ecosystem, we would lose a, entire economies from those countries. This is the only barrier reef that we have in the continental U.S. So if we saw this ecosystem collapse in Florida, we could see a lot of really negative consequences for our shorelines. The interesting thing and kind of the more how I try to think about on the positive side is in the Florida Keys and a lot of places in the Caribbean, we've been experiencing reef decline for a long time. With that, we've also been able to develop a lot of techniques. The problem with our reefs in their present state is that there's not enough coral to naturally recover on their own. So they need intervention. They need somebody to help assist in repopulating these reefs so that when we put these corals out there, they can connect with each other again. They can start to reproduce and spawn with each other to create new coral recruitment. So the restoration program here, it has a very active and unique approach to rebuilding our coral reefs. We work with two formerly dominant corals, staghorn and elkhorn, and they're both listed as endangered under the Endangered Species Act. How the process starts, it begins in our coral nurseries, which are about three miles offshore, off the coast of the Florida Keys. We start with these PVC and fiberglass structures. The corals, we begin with small fragments, about 10 centimeters in length and we actually hang those pieces of coral onto what we call coral nursery trees. The trees are suspended in the water, which means these corals are also suspended in the water, and that gives them 360 degrees of 
water motion and water movement. Um, it allows them to grow in every single direction, so it really helps promote their growth. So from there, we'll actually harvest them off of these um, tree structures and then take them to a nearby degraded reef and that site will become a restoration site. Our process is really unique in that we've gone through a lot of different um, iterations of it and kind of come to what seems to work best for us. And it's all done in the water. So we utilize that technology now to what we call micro-fragmentation. From one piece of coral, instead of waiting two years to cut it in half and make two, we now take it and make 20 to 100 tiny fractional pieces. Each piece will grow back to this size in just months. They grow together in touch within two years and refuse into a coral head that would have taken 25 to 100 years to grow and we do it in just a couple of years. Now that sounds incredible, and it is, but it lends itself new hope and new technology that we can grow these slow-growing corals by the tens of thousands to the stage and size that they can be reproductive. So we're taking the corals that are now resistant to today's conditions and we're making thousands more of them. Now we're not doing anything like GMO. We're not cutting genes up and planting them and splicing them in from other gene types, other strains, or even other organisms. So we're using natural selection. We're speeding up the process of how long it takes us to get them to be able to be reproductive and uh, cross again. We know we've lost 25 to 40 percent of the world's corals. So do we want to wait a hundred years for those to possibly come back? Or do we want to take those ones and make thousands of them instead of one more? It's what man has done for helping to implement all agricultural crops, whether it's plants or animals. Now it's time to do that with our underwater crops. Coral Morphologic is a hybrid art and science endeavor um, that uh, we started uh, 10 years ago with my partner Jared McKay, who's a musician. Together we work to bring the public to understand how corals are these incredibly beautiful, alien, um, futuristic organisms that um, are really inspiring. And if we can get people to sort of be inspired by these really unusual organisms, then I think that people will care more about them. They're about as close to being aliens as you can imagine here on our planet and they clone themselves, they're fluorescent, um, they can live forever, um, they've been on this planet for half a billion years, maybe there's something that humans can learn from the corals so that we can be better citizens of our planet. They act as a reminder that we constantly need to be adapting and here in South Florida with sea level rise, learning to adapt to these changing conditions is going to be one of the first and most important lessons that we can learn from the corals. I think if you fall in love with anything, you're gonna to wanna to save it. And corals are absolutely um, organisms that people do fall in love with. This project definitely gives you hope. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of reasons that people would feel down or sad, um, but really, to go back to a site and see corals you planted four years ago and they're still around and they're still living and there's a whole host of fishes around them and a whole community around it, it's a really exciting feeling. It kind of gets rid of all those feelings of despair because you know that you can make a difference and you can change the fate of our reefs. You know, um, it took us six years to produce our first 600. Then we produced 600 in a month. Last year we planted over 20,000 corals. We hope to plant 50,000 corals next year, 100,000 corals the next year. But I think I'm gonna to get to the million mark before I retire in just the next few years.